Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm João Max Lima, and joining me today in London, I've got Alex Rabbit, Managing Director of the European Data Center Association. Um, Alex, thanks a lot for joining us. We usually talk every year quite often, but this year has been quite an odd one. I mean, how, how are you doing to start with? It certainly has been odd, hasn't it? Yeah, no, everything's good. I mean, we're, we're still we're still active. Obviously, everything is now online. So, uh, you know, we haven't uh, had any face to face meetings with anybody for a year, which is interesting. Um, but it's it's all OK. It's good. Hmm. OK, well, let's hope that soon enough we can have a drink or just a catch up in face to face rather than just virtual. But um, let's talk about the UDCA. I mean, tell our viewers what the, the organization is, what it does, what your objectives are. Um, just a bit of a brief over the okay, UDCA. So, so the EUDCA, or the European Data Centre Association, um, is a effectively a trade association for data centre operators and people associated with the industry in uh, Europe. Um, we have really sort of three main activities. Um, the first is, is uh, lobbying. So we lobby at a European level. Um, on matters relating to data centers. That's quite important because people in uh, the EU uh, who, are making, who are legislating uh, against, or against or for data centers very often are doing so without the knowledge of what a data center is, let alone how it works or when, what its place in society is. So actually just informing and, and, and educating and hoping to get them to understand what a data center is and its importance in the, in, in, in the world in general is, is something that's really important. Secondly, though, we also do uh, marketing for our members. So some of the smaller members might be a small operator in a, in a maybe an outlying country or somewhere like Cyprus, for example. I say that's an example we remember there. Just a small data center. Um, and they could never afford to market on a European-wide or even a global scale. So, um, so we also market on behalf of our members. So for some of our smaller members, and I take, for example, an operator in Cyprus who's got a small data center, couldn't afford to market to the whole of Europe or even on a global scale. So what we do is we provide a marketing platform for them where they're actually being seen on a much wider scale. Um, and that's obviously good for them. We've had members who picked up businesses from, uh, from, from conferences and, and events that we've done around the world um, that weren't even at those events, but ended up with the business. Um, so so that's, that's kind of our second um, Second activity, if you like, and our third is we act as a coordination point for the for the NTAs for the for the national trade associations because you know, here in Europe you've got you've got 27 countries um, and each one might have a national trade association or some countries where the where the data center market isn't quite so big don't have one uh, but what we do is we act for them bring them together in a committee and then they can share the challenges and and and, and issues that they face at a national level. Um, and we can maybe help them with those as well. So that's kind of the, the third activity, if you like. Okay, just a quick follow-up question on maybe point number one, um, lobbying close to the EU. Do you think with COVID, Brussels has, got, has become a bit more aware of what data center operators do, or do you think COVID has helped the industry to be recognized at the political level, I would say? I, I'm totally honest, I don't believe that it has. Um, I, I think what's, what certainly, I think what has happened is COVID has made Brussels aware that the, the internet, that the video calling, that that kind of thing is really important. But but how that all happens, they don't really seem to have a grasp on. They just kind of look at it and say, well, you know, it happens in the background. I don't need to know about that. Um, so I, I don't think it's it particularly helped the industry move forward, but it has at least raised awareness of, of, of something that's happening. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Well, but one of the things they've already accomplished this year, and we're only one month into 2021, um, it's a climate neutral data center pact um, launched in, in January. Um, I mean, talk, uh, talk us through the, the pact. What is the pact? What, what are the objectives? Um, there's a lot of companies and associations involved as well, organizations. Um, Given us an overview of this news. Okay, so, so the Climate Neutral Data Center Pact, what it was about was basically getting together and, and, and forming uh, some kind of agreement between data center operators, cloud operators um, across um, the, well, I was going to say across Europe. It is across Europe, but many of them are global players. Um, but and, and agreeing a way forward to try to aim uh, to achieve carbon neutrality by uh, 2030. Um, why did we do it? Well, for, well, there's two reasons, really. First of all, well, I've got to say that you know, data centers are, in my opinion, and most people who work in this industry's opinion, 
they are incredibly good for the environment. Um, you know, people people doing things online, people shopping online, and that sort of thing is much better for the environment than people going out and buying things in cars and all that sort of thing. So, so we are good for the environment, but we're, we're perceived very often as, as, as almost as pariahs because we use lots and lots of power and produce lots and lots of heat and we don't seem to do anything. And it's all in a box in a building somewhere that nobody really understands. So um, we needed to, to, we needed to, um, come up with a with something which which was easy for for non-industry members to understand about what we are doing to improve our environmental uh, status and improve the, the way that we are in the environment. So that was that was really sort of the basis that Pact came about. Um, why is it important? Well, if we don't let, if we don't self um, self regulate ourselves. Uh, then trust me, they will. Um, and 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 they're and they're not people, as I said, they're not people who really understand what a data center is or how critical it is. Yet they're going to they're going to start drafting laws that, that that we'll have to abide with, which may be impossible. Um, so it's incredibly important that that we got there and, and got their agreement. I mean, they're coming with us. So they're not they're not they're not against us. They you know they know what we're doing and they agree with us and they they're coming with us. So which is why there was actually a a minister's statement in the, or commissioner's statement, sorry, in the in the actual press release. Um, but, you know, yeah, it was really important to get this doing. And it's taken about six months to, to get to where we are. Okay, well, I, I think it's a very good initiative for the industry because, I mean, we've had some, let's call it bad publicity for our, for our sector, especially last year with some documentaries from some of the nationals in the UK. Um, and yes, I mean, there's a lot of good things happening on the climate front, especially in the Nordics, where we see the heat exchange um, and saving energy, giving energy back to the community. So. It is quite interesting. But um, aside from climate, and I, I really don't want to call climate um, a trend, but for the sake of the question here, what other trends do you see in the, the marketplace across Europe um, happening this year? I think I think one of the things that, that is obvious is, is the growth. Um, mm. you know, growth, had, COVID, it's a terrible thing to say, but COVID has actually been quite good for the data center industry in some ways because it's driven growth. Um, you know, it's driven demand for online and, and everything and everyone has gone online and that's, that's great. And it has really grown, grown the industry, which is fantastic. Um, so I think that's one, one thing is that the market is growing. Um, it's, also, it's also still consolidating. It's been going on for a few years and will go on for a few more years. Um, so, you know, mergers, acquisitions, they're happening and they're, they're continuing to happen. I think what may happen is some of the smaller players may end up getting swallowed up by the bigger players. I'm not sure whether that's necessarily a good thing, but I think it is what, what's happening. Um, and then I guess the other thing that I think is, is, is really interesting is we're beginning to mature. We're not, we, we're not mature, but we're beginning to mature. Um, and you know, it's going to take a long time. We're, we're teenagers now. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, it's going to take us a long time to mature properly, but we are beginning to mature. Um, we're beginning to get away from this idea um, that the industry is completely manned by middle-aged men in grey suits. Um, we're also beginning to get away from the idea that everything we do is bleeding edge because an awful lot of the stuff we do has been done for years. You know, I remember not very long ago um, being at a conference where somebody announced that they were doing some adiabatic cooling in their data centre and saying how wonderful it was and how bleeding edge it was. You know, but adiabatic cooling was invented by the G Egyptians 4,000 years ago. Um, <laughs> it's not quite bleeding edge. Um, and, and, and so really... Um, you know, as an industry, though, we're now beginning to mature. We're beginning to be able to, to understand our place in society. Yeah. You know, we are we are the foundation of the digital age. We are incredibly important to everything that goes on, even more so right now. Um, but but we need to find our place in society and and, and and be seen to do the good that we do do. That's good. And then this sort of flip frogs me to the next question, which is. What is the UDCA going to be doing over the next six, 12 months to help the industry find its place in society? Good, good, good question. So I think, I think, I think there's, a, again, a few things we'll be doing. We'll be continuing to lobby. Um, there's an awful lot of regulation coming out of Europe right now. Um, and we're looking at that regu regulation all the time, reviewing it all the time. We're commenting, we're taking stuff back to the industry. Um, and we're, so we're, so we're, we're taking that legislation and we're making sure that it's appropriate to our industry. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to do that. We're going to do. We're still going to do some events this year. Um, they will probably be online events, um, but we will do some events this year. Um, and we're, we're partnering with with 
you know, various organisations that we have done in the past. It's important to our members that we uh, are involved with those events because that's one of the ways in which they market their uh, their particular services to, to, to a wider audience. So we'll continue to do that this year. Um, what we're also going to try and continue to do um, is continue to grow the EUDCA to, again, to, 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 for the EUDCA to have its place in society. Um, you know, we're a relatively young organisation. Um, we've made some incredibly important uh, steps recently, um, but we need to continue to move forwards. We need to continue to move the industry forwards and make sure that actually the industry is understood as being critical infrastructure and not something which is for, for geeks or people who play games, um, you know, which is, which is unfortunately the way we're seeing quite often. Yes, well, I mean, I've been following the UDCA story for quite a while now, um, and it's quite an interesting path. Um, but I mean, if our viewers want to want to learn more about the UDCA and even perhaps join the UDCA, where do they go? What's what's the process? How that how does that happen? If you want to know more about the UDCA, then you can go to our website, which is eudca.org. Um, there's a lot of information about what we do there, who we are, who our board members are. Um, there's also a, a, a joining form, so you can actually you can actually apply to become a member through through the website. Um, we do publish a weekly. Uh, newsletter, um, which can be found at news.eudca.org. Um, and we also publish to our members a monthly uh, newsletter, which is actually emailed out. So, uh, but if you want to join that mailing list, then, then please join it. Uh, again, you can do that through our website. Um, or if anybody has anything specific that they'd like to, um, like to say or do or, or ask, then, then you're free to email me, um, alex.rabbits, R-A-W-B-E-W-T-S, at eudc.org. Um, Alex Rabbit, Managing Director of the European Data Center Association. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, and thank you to our viewers for also tuning in into JSA TV and JSA podcasts. And don't forget to check our social media channels as well. Um, until next time, happy networking. Mm -hmm.